Hey, everybody. Uh, you're about to watch the first official uh, episode or listen to the first official episode of Blue Collar Cast Holes. Uh, I know we did it the first time uh, with me and Janie going over the propositions. That was us kind of trying out the equipment, uh, her giving me a hand with uh, trying to figure some of this stuff out. Uh, but now kind of getting into the the point of what the, the podcast is actually about. Um, I myself am a tradesman. I've been a lineman for almost 15 years now with a utility company. I'm also a business owner. I own a bar in a small town in Exeter. And I like to bring my friends and family and other folks on that are actually business owners or tradespeople, kind of sharing their experiences on how they got to where they're at, um, kind of what they're doing to navigate through this crazy time, and also where they're going to be going, where they see things, uh, where they're going to be in the future. Uh, so my first uh, guest on was a good friend of mine, someone I consider family, really, a little brother, uh, David Welch. He's a pastor at the Exeter uh, Church here, um, the Rocky Hill Community Church, and um, try to keep it as PC as we could, <laughs> but uh, uh, two good buddies uh, get together, it tends to get a little wild, so uh, David can apologize for himself. I will not apologize for anything I'm about to say, or that I did say that you're about to hear. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy. So, How what, many is it that you, what do you do for a living? Well, uh... It's a long story. This. It's a long story. <laughs> you, it's better if you don't, but okay. it's better for my life if you do. I understand. <laughs> That's why. Well, how about this? We'll just wait till the very end, and then we say what you actually do for a living. Okay. And then everybody's like, oh, my God. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. So how, how, <laughs> right? how we did can't you do go? that? I know exactly. <laughs> we can't do that. <laughs> it was the whole point of this. So <laughs> Yeah. So, okay. So I am a, what you would call a, uh, lead pastor of a church uh, in Exeter, uh, Rocky Hill Community Church, and I started in February of this year, actually. I was voted in after our founding pastor stepped down. He was, you know, retiring. He was trying to do um, some ministry stuff before he died, that kind of thing. You know, he was 70. He's like, hey, I got stuff to do. Oh, he's not dying, though. <laughs> no, no, oh, no, no. Okay. He was just saying, <laughs> he was thinking, you know, this is the, I'm 70 years old. Like, there's things I want to do. Wow, he's really 70? Yeah, you never guess that. He looks good. Right? Damn. Picked the wrong job. <laughs> no, he's, he's he's got good genes. I look older than him. A little bit. At times. <laughs> so, yeah, I know. He, and then I got voted in and. Uh, six weeks later, the world shut down. So this has been quite a ride uh, nice. as being I'll, a pastor. You know, you're putting that together. It's I voted for you to be voted in. That was a yes vote. Um, kind of against my will. Why mm -hmm. told me I had to. Fair enough. I knew better. <laughs> but I also feel like maybe that's why things got shut down. Because um, Cause, cause of me? Because you got voted in. <laughs> I'm Just saying, if we're trying to put pieces together in this thing. Two and two. I show up, all of a sudden, boom, nobody can drink in my bar. <laughs> Dick. Well, you know, it's, it's, I never thought I would be doing it. Never once did I ever dream that I was going to be a pastor. Never once did I dream I was even going to be in a church. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> sorry, I don't want to laugh at that. And I only say this because you are family, mm -hmm. 100%, and most people would not understand me saying this, but I know you do. I absolutely didn't think that this is what you would be doing either. <laughs> I don't but think many people ever, ever I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm just being honest. Listen, you are what you eat, so I understand. You are what you wah, dream. Wah, but wah, 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 wah. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I never thought I'd be doing this because of it was, first off, I couldn't stand the church growing up. You know, there were there were two concepts in my mind about the church was and not uh, and, and which is interesting. I never actually denounced this idea of a deity, like mm -hmm. some sort of supreme creator, um, someone that was in control of the, you know, pulling the strings of life and creation. I never denounced that idea. Did I understand what it was? No, um, I was thinking, I, you know, I guess I was just kind of guessing 
right based upon what i had well, been and exposed to or at, a, at a young age too i mean oh how old are you now david 34 i mean most people's eyes that's still pretty young mm -hmm. and if you're talking about like even like in your 20s your mid 20s and stuff mm -hmm. and we're all searching for the hell we are anyways yeah in the first place you know to, to let alone to to find yourself spiritually is you know, I mean, it's a journey. It doesn't just kind of walk. No, up, it's, it's, you know, yeah. And, and mine, my journey is, you know, unique, of course, as, as most are. You're like a snowflake. Thank you. I'm proud. Very I mean, it's unique. a big snowflake, but it's almost a snowball. <laughs> I prefer snowball. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer that. I like that a little bit better. Uh, it's pretty. At least I have purpose. Snowball fights, build snowmen. Structures like a yellow snowball. Well, this was a nice conversation. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. I, you know, I never. I never guessed or thought that I would, um, you know, be contemplating. Well, this was the path that you were. Well, yeah. I, I I never thought that I'd be contemplating who or what is is the cause of existence, right? Right. So when I, when I, but I never denounced the idea that there was some sort of creator. I was, I was pretty, I was pretty uh, sold on that. And I never denounced this idea of this guy named Jesus of Nazareth uh, that lived, you know, 2000 years ago. I never denounced his, uh, his existence, nor did I denounce this possibility of him having some supernatural existence here on earth. I never denounced that. I thought that that was pretty clear based upon how the, the at the time, I, I thought the transmission of lore, right? The, trans, yeah. the, trans, the transmission or the development of, of uh, starts with an M. What am I trying to say? Like lore. Myth? Myth, yeah. The transmission of myths and such. What was the word you were looking for? Yeah, oh, you're okay, welcome. You. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, I never denounced that, but I did not like the church. Right, I could not stand the church. Why is that? Well, the Pope. Oh, like the little kid thing? No, 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 no. Oh. So uh, most people would have a problem with that. <laughs> well, I get, it's yes. cool if you're all right with it, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we were just having this conversation today over at I, I had a lunch meeting and with the Pope. No. <laughs> <laughs> Other a pope, pope. Eh. not the pope. No, oh. no popes, poops, but no popes. Poops. So uh, throughout history, y you can see the effects of power and what the pope has done throughout history, claiming things in the name of that creator, name of that Jesus of Nazareth, and has caused lots and lots and lots and lots of problems in the, in the world. You know taking lives, taking money, taking, right. you know, countries, all in the name, the so-called name of Jesus. They, they, they felt that that was their, their requirement of sure. being followers. So I really had a big problem with that. And I didn't even, I didn't even know a whole lot. I just knew things like, you know, uh, Inquisition and, yeah. and, you know, the Crusades and all this stuff. The, right. the, the things that really kind of like forced their, their religion onto other people. So I, I had a problem with organized religion. I never had a problem with this idea of God and Jesus. Sure. So that's my first problem. I understand that. Second problem was because the first one is based upon control, right? So the church just wanted to control you. They wanted it. They were a puppet of some sort of power struggle or power system that you used to control the masses, right? Mm -hmm. that, that I had a big problem with that because that's not authentic to me. That's right. That's very... Um, I don't know. It was it was very sketchy, <laughs> yeah, to say the least. But yeah. So then the second thing was, all they want is your money. You know how you go to church service and, and they tend to always have a, a plate that's being passed or taking an offering, and they guilt you into this and guilt you into that, or at least you know tithing. As of, well, we're not. Are we here for a Bible study? Because no, I'm prepared. No, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> and bring my Bible. I have one. Do you? Yeah, Janie got me one. Good girl. Mm -hmm. I put my so, cup of water on it. At no, night. You did not. <laughs> <laughs> I read it. I read it. I'm not gonna lie. I did. Okay. 
So that was that was really where I was coming from as far as church is. They, I never, this is why I say I never, not that I never saw myself being a spiritual person, but right. being involved with a uh, church. Well, to, be, to be in the position that you are right now, I mean, that's I, from, from like a big brother's perspective mm-hmm. looking at it, I, I'm, I'm very impressed. And then at the same time, it, it's not like it doesn't make sense. You know, it makes sense that you're, that you found this, you know, through the, the path that you took, mm-hmm. you know, and experiences. And I'm, I think you're very good at it. Well, thank you. Well, it's because I, I think I come f- come at it from a skeptical perspective. I like that. I like that a lot. I like that from Dr. Miller. I always, you know, I wasn't, I was never like real big into going to church mm-hmm. either, you know, and really probably for the same reasons that you, were, that like you said, you know, and growing up, we, you know, our parents took us, you know, on, I don't know if Connor even really went, you know, it was more of like me and Cole. Uh, well, Connor, I, I did Royal Rangers back in the day. I did that on myself. I went, I went to church every Wednesday. Well, like through Delma and, and and friends and yeah, I went to church every Wednesday, every Wednesday night. And then Sundays I'd go occasionally on in the morning. Right. See, and we were, we were always in youth, like that kind of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And then like we, we tried a couple different churches, you know, with, with my parents, but like it was never really consistent, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, the I always like the community aspect of it, you know. I yeah. always like that part, the the um the fellowship part of it, you know. And and spiritually I kind of was in that same place with it. But I think that when when first I we were kind of shopping, you know, yeah. for for a church. And we end up at Hold on Rocky one second. Home. Is that still recording? No, that one. Okay. Okay. Time in. Game on. <laughs> Game on <laughs> So we were shopping churches, yeah, and uh, I remember going. I, I remember listening to to uh, Doctor Miller's, you know, first first sermon and that that I sat through, and I was like, man, it's like a history lesson, mm-hmm. and I really enjoyed that. I'm not gonna lie, Jane looked like she's about ready to fall asleep, but because there's a lot going on in there, and I was yeah. absorbing it, you yeah. know, because I was like, oh man, like he's kind of putting a lot of this stuff to the test, even as he's speaking about it, and. It took a little bit, but then, you know, a couple times before he said, like what you said, that he was like, I'm a religious skeptic. Yeah. And to hear, a, you know, a pastor say that was like, oh, man, that feels kind of nice. You know, like, I don't feel like they're selling me something now. Mm-hmm. I feel like this is genuine. Like, I'm in this same kind of place. I'm in the like, same boat. Yeah. So, and I, I really appreciated that. And it's one of the things that I always, you know, kind of kept me coming back was one of the history lessons the questions that always got brought up, you know, even from the pastor and that I had for myself. And then now just like listening to you go up there and I'm waiting for you to drop like an F bomb or something while you're giving. Dude, it's going to happen, dude. Sometimes I'm getting fired up. You said, you've said fart before you've said, I mean, even stuff where I'm like, I just, I would try to look for like some of the people and I'm like, Ooh, they're not going to like that. Or they're going to make a face, but everybody giggles. Nobody. I've never seen anybody have an issue. No, I haven't seen it either. And in fact, you said suck. Oh That's yeah, about the worst you've gotten. I think I said something. I think I said crap this weekend. You should. I, and you it's should cuss. well to a degree, to a degree. Uh, and and the point oh, is to a very to a, a very high degree. And you should cuss <laughs> as long all as the it's time. in the Bible, it's already fine. So if it's fine. Hell, damn, crap, yeah. Shat. Uh, <laughs> Shat. <laughs> uh, pissed off. Does it say that in the Bible? Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. They started that. Pisseth against the wall. That's not pissed off. It says pisses against the shut up. Yeah. You're stupid. My favorite part. Don't believe my it. favorite part was the um, the Apostle Paul. I forget where it is, but he's talking to the he's writing you know these letters and he's telling this church. He's like, guys, I don't know who is telling you this that that's okay to believe, but honestly, if they're really gonna tell you that, I'm so tired of them saying these things that I just wish they would go ahead and emasculate themselves. Ooh. Go fuck themselves? Cut their peepees off. And put them in their butts. They I guess that that's inferred. Out. but That wasn't in the Greek translation. <laughs> Not in the original Greek. Uh, but it was It was like he's, he's saying, I'm so sick of that. I just hope they cut their manhood off. Because they kept talking about uh, uh, the only way that you can be a part of this covenant is if you're cu- you, you maintain the Jewish covenant of, of, of circumcision. Oh, so he's like, 
I He's like, you, I'm tired of telling you people telling I hope you that. You go deep. Yeah. I hope you slip. Yeah. yeah. So uh rather mean. Paul was Paul was uh he was one of my favorites, man. I love that guy. Yeah, he's one of the reasons why I became such a believer. And I know that this is it's a it's a philosophical concept and I forget what it's called, but basically I believe because they believe. He's also a very good bass player for the Beatles. Or like an angel. <laughs> like I said before, we were trying to have a good conversation. We were having one. Don't <laughs> let my Don't. nonsense stump you up from getting out your truth because that's what we're here for. Right. So, anyways, yeah, I, uh, I, you know, I went off to you know into the service, and I still had those those reservations, honestly, especially seeing the Quran, seeing what these people were willing to die for. All right. Seeing what just evaluating what what is peace right how old were you when you went into the service 19 19 yeah right out of high school huh yeah well i went to work in tipton out uh out in the fields for a year so clear your mind i had nothing else <laughs> nothing else my yeah. dad was we were yeah there was nothing else right so that's, that's why like I'd, a well, it's like the it's a deal with like growing up here in the valley it's like you kind of feel like you're limited to some options there's not right. a whole lot. Yeah, it doesn't. And that's a, we all, but the problem is too, we all grow up like that too, thinking like you, you know, what, what do you do for parties? Like, what do you do on the weekend when you just, you know, you drink or screw mm -hmm. and you, most of the time it's in an orchard Yeah, for both. Same time. Most likely. <laughs> but like you grow up with that, with that thing in your head, you know, of like, that's all that there is here. And then y you find yourself all of a sudden a face with adulthood and it's like, eh, maybe that is all there is here. You know, so then mo uh, and a lot of guys do that, you know, make that jump into to military guys and girls. You know, a lot of a lot of people I went to school with and, it's, and same thing. I mean, what, three years ahead of you? I yeah. was 2004. Yeah. So I was one. Yeah. So and, and when we when I graduated, that was that that start of the next year. My freshman year of college essentially was 9-11. Oh, no you kidding. know, so that. Yeah. And then so Cole, my brother, was a. Uh, junior at the time and he was pretty much like he was going to enlist to the military before before he was even 18 like he was ready, oh, to, he was go. ready to go and there was a few guys that a few of my buddies kind of did the same but um because it w there was only a few that maybe left like right after high school and then it was a few after when 9 11 happened it was like okay now i got something i can go do i'm gonna go enlist mm -hmm. you know and i'm gonna go go fight for the country that thing you know and then here we are 19 years later, and it's pretty much the same shit show. Yes. I mean, in that regard, on that on that whole deal, you know, when you think it's just, oh, it's going to be like the Gulf War, you know? Yeah, no. Go put in a couple weeks. <laughs> that that did not happen. And call it a day. No. 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 But, yeah, that's a uh, – that's. I mean, uh, and that's that's the thing, too, like with – like you're saying, it's like where, where, we're, where we come from and then to think about where you're going to end up being down the road, it's like – to even have the best well laid plans. And I don't think it matters where you grow up. I think it's probably always a little bit of the same. You know, everybody's always kind of got that attitude of, like, how do you get out of this town? Yeah. You know, but a lot of that's just you trying to go and find yourself, you know? So, and I'll be honest with you, I don't have very many regrets. And one of the things I probably would say would line up as a regret was not joining the military. Really? Yeah. And only because it You'd was be doing the same stuff your brother is. Yeah, that's the thing. Now I'm kind of glad I don't didn't do it. But right. <laughs> but I mean, at the same time, it, it was one of those things. Like I watched, and that was a deal. I watched him go through it, and I watched him step up to these different challenges and these different mm -hmm. things. Where I'm like, all right, that's exactly what I would have been doing too. Here, you know, I'd be 37 years old, have a neck and back surgery. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he's been through some hell with it, but. I mean, he has a great life to show for it, and he's got some good friends. But, I mean, went through some hell through it, you know. So, kind of a tough time to hit the military. It was really <laughs> at that time when you guys did, you know. My mom wrote you a letter, too, when you left. No. Oh, okay, sorry, I won't bring that up. We'll edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> was she supposed to? I, I don't know. She probably did. You just don't remember, dum dum. That that's quite possible. It seemed like she wrote everybody a letter that ended up leaving, and it was like be like a two page 
You paid her? Yeah. Well, why don't we just pretend she did? Okay. Okay. That's good. That was so nice. It was you. very sweet. I really appreciate that she put that <laughs> kind of time in. You I know? remember she wrote a bunch of freaking letters. Yeah. And so all my buddies had left, and I, I swear you got one. Probably. Yeah. It's just been that long ago. It's been a long time. Mm. I left in, I joined in November 2005. What did you, what did you do? What did I what In do the mean, military. Oh. Besides fucking push-ups and hold a gun, what did you do? Eight double rations when I was, wasn't supposed to have any. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so I didn't have really. The push-ups for your knees. <laughs> Kept getting in trouble for all this fatty cakes <laughs> I was sneaking. Uh, so, <laughs> is that what they're called? Fatty cakes, yeah. That's what the rapper said. No. Oh, see, uh, that would be a legit military. Yeah, they like gave you like the snacks. Was like, here's your bitch cupcakes. <laughs> it's called zingers. No, those are real. I'd that's want what we got. Something that would make you feel bad for eating it. Oh, that's true. You'd shape it like a penis. I wouldn't like it. <laughs> I had a dream. Doubtful. You gotta <laughs> eat the wop. Mm. Mm. Your buddy has to hold the back of your head while he eat it. <laughs> For all of you watching out there, just because I'm here does not mean that I condone this behavior. Absolutely does. <laughs> just signed up for it. He's cool with it. <laughs> Is it working on yours? Well, I can. Sorry. I'm going to try the, the red one. So, yeah, I ended up joining because I had nothing going on, right? Right. And um, my biggest fear, honestly, was turning out like my father. And Is your dad in the military? No, 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 no. My dad was a huge drug addict. I don't know if you know this, but when I was living at Ian's, yeah, because we were, we, my dad and I were, I left my dad's place, but we were living in a, a trailer or at Rocky Hill? No, not that one. That was before. Oh. But yeah, do you know about that one? Yeah. A little bit. That's my, that's my, that's like the, I wouldn't say the bottom, but it's part of, it's one of the bottoms. Right. Right. But this one was, we were living on a actual ditch bank with like some uh, trailer that was just like f- some dude had and it was all dilapidated and he just in the back of his, his. Right. Uh, shop and so we that's so where we, you guys crashed that's where we crashed you know and, and you know we did we did what we could and I didn't know no better honestly but I just got tired of my dad doing drugs all the time so I left and that's why I ended up at Ian's yeah and then and I was on I our was, couch for a couple of days <laughs> oh yeah oh for sure you know and that was that led to a whole that's a whole nother conversation yeah of what, re- what really set my life up well, but I think it's all pieces of it. I think, you know, it, well, and you're a psychology major. Yeah. So you know this better than I do. But all those all those pieces together, are like kind of that, it's the things that molded you, mm-hmm. right? I mean, and it's, it, maybe it is easy to kind of pick up like the bigger things, the heavier things, right? The tougher things at, at certain points. But even then it's, I mean, who's, there's so many pieces of that that actually set you in that in that path that you went on, oh, you yeah. know, the direction that you went and made you the person that you are. Oh yeah, for better for worse, you know, the experiences that happen. Um, I mean, some would say like you know the harder the harder trials like that tend to probably you know set you in a, in a better direction, or mm-hmm. you you take those you have a you have a better lesson to learn from, right? Like. But also as a kid, it sucks to go through something like that. Not everybody makes it through stuff like that either. Well, that's, that's okay. W- what you just said is what led me, if we're fast forwarding in the story from the time that I joined the military to the time that I said, you know what, I'm going to take my face seriously, Yeah, was what you just said. Yeah. Is the, the vast majority, if you do any statistical analysis on any, um, child like ad uh, adverse child you know uh development mm-hmm. you will find that the major- vast majority of the of the children that either witness or experience sexual abuse physical abuse emotional abuse they repeat it yes they they repeat that that cycle the same thing when they have parents that are drug addicted 
yeah. they, they repeat it. Or, or even alcohol addiction, they repeat it. Right. So it's this cycle that they get stuck in. So a lot of the times what needs to happen is intervention. So either you have child protective services come in or you have some you know, family member come in. You try to break that cycle and it doesn't happen. Right. I didn't try to break the cycle. All I said was something's got to change. Right. So all of a sudden I go into this whole nother path that I never thought. I never, I didn't dream I was going to be in the military. You know what my dream was when I was a kid? I want to be a scientist. Ooh, why not? Why not? That's good. No, I'm saying that's a great, that's a great deal. I love that's to what be I a wanted. scientist too. That was what I wanted. I was, uh, boom, 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 hey, boom. that's exactly <laughs> why. That is a hundred percent why. You could be a scientist still. P- probably, I mean, probably be a food scientist now. Life science. Life science. So yeah, no, I w- that's what I wanted to be. I was in like, you know, the gate program. Isn't a food scientist a chef? No, they're test kitchen people. Test. Oh. Ki- yes, they are chefs, but they're test kitchen chefs. So they do, they do. Uh, oh, you just want to taste analysis. the food? That's all. That's not a scientist. Yeah, yeah. You just want to be a food tester? Maybe. Ice cream tester for Ben and Jerry's. Ooh. You ever watch Bon Appetit on YouTube? Or Bon Bong Appetit? Yeah, no, not Bong Appetit. <laughs> <laughs> bon, uh, I think it's Bon Appetit, but they do like gourmet talkies and gourmet oh. Starbursts and all that stuff. So it's it's a test kitchen, but they do what? Like they make that stuff, but they make it like... It's gourmet, so it's extra sugar, extra uh, everything. And so. it's also like not like all the um, shit that makes it last longer. Yeah, it's not the... It EMG wouldn't be. EMG See, I can't think of names. Well, what you just said, all those additives, there you that's go. a food scientist. That's discovering the compounds that are edible, that it they taste. It makes a Twinkie last forever? Yes. they don't, by the way. How do you know that? Because I'm a food scientist. You haven't lived it forever. Bro, I what? am a hostess connoisseur, <laughs> and that shit goes bad. <laughs> you want to know how I quit smoking the first time? How's that? Hostess and rock star. No kidding. Yeah. How and are you so thin? My, well, because I stopped doing that. So again. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. No, but like I did. It yeah. was like ten o'clock every day. I'd be like, stop at the at the Quickie Mart and grab yeah. a Hostess snack and a Rockstar. And it was like my ten o'clock thing. I was like, huh. nah, I don't need a cigarette. And huh. Actually, I made it quite a while doing it that way. No kidding. Until I felt like I was gonna have a heart attack from all the fucking energy drinks. I was you kind of get out of breath. Oh, it was bad. <laughs> I don't. Dude, I haven't had a. Rockstar energy drink in years. Really? Yeah. I sometimes, you know, I'm I'm not a huge fan of them, but I partake. Yeah. Every once in a while. Well, sometimes I used to do it all the time, but it was like for work, you know? Yeah. And like, well, like Bell, man, he slams those five-hour energies, and I'm like, dude, you're going to stop your heart. Dude, they're too expensive, or I would. Yeah. I don't, but like, we'd work crazy hours, and like you're just dragging ass. Most of the time the worst part was like when you're driving home mm-hmm. at the end of it, you know, and like the sun's coming up and you're like, I'm almost there. And you're like, mm, <laughs> yeah. I can remember like pulling up to the yard in Tillery for <laughs> we were getting out of getting done with the job and the sun's coming up and I'm like looking at the yard, I'm like, Oh, I made it and I swear I almost took the truck over the overpass. Yeah. Like I woke up and I was like, Oh <laughs> no way. <laughs> The guy next to me was asleep through the whole thing. He didn't even know it. He didn't even know. He's fine. He lived. Yeah. So, I, I mean, for 12 years or better of working utility work, working hellacious hours, I just, I don't know. I, I, you go day long. You start with one in the morning or coffee. I still do coffee. Mm-hmm. I, just, I love coffee. But, I mean, I might have a coffee at night, but not not if I don't. I don't need the caffeine to stay awake. Yeah. And it hurts later on. It's like sleep deprivation is worse than a hangover sometimes. Yeah. Like, it sucks. Yeah. I mean, I know Big you've time. done that, like, in the military and stuff, well, yeah. too. And yeah, and you have kind to kind of go through those things. Yeah. But, yeah, long hours are, are hell. So, yeah, that, that what you were saying about that cycle of, you know, people don't make it out of some of those, I'm those life situations. you knew where we were at. I had no fucking clue where we were. Just so we're Good clear. Job. That's why you're here. Th- just so we're clear. The only reason I can do that anymore is because I'm heavily medicated. Oh, right. Mm-hmm. On what? Uh, Ritalin? No. You all kinds of smart and amped up. That's w- I'm supposed to be, but I got tired of it. Seriously. Viagra. Close. It's a different blue pill. Cialis. 
Advil. Aleve. Uh, Aleve. Aleve. Blue. Aleve. Uh, Baby no, aspirins. they take. Um, I I was having real bad uh, nightmares. Really? Yeah. So I started, um, and it got really bad. And uh, one day, me and my wife were in the kitchen or in the dining or the living room, and we were getting in a discussion. And I I broke our ki- our uh, coffee table, mm-hmm. and that ain't me. Oh. That ain't me. I don't do that. Oh, you stuff. meant to break it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, you didn't sit on it. You're talking. Are you kidding me? I'm sorry. Right now? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Serious conversation. <laughs> you got mad. Are we you broke are the we, table? <laughs> are we in fourth grade again? <laughs> yes. We never left. Your mama's so big. <laughs> never left. Sorry. No. So uh, yeah, I got super angry and I actually broke our our uh, coffee table and I like slammed my fist through it mm. and I just stopped and I was like. Oh, that's not me. That's not me. So I went and I talked to a bunch of people at VA and stuff, and they got me hooked up. You went to the VA. Of course, they're mm-hmm. going to throw pills at you. I've been. Bro. I just circled our conversation back. That's effective. That's effective communication. Yeah. Okay. okay so that, that's <laughs> so why. Because the VA's got you jacked full of pills. Yeah. And you're not breaking coffee tables. You can remember conversations. Yeah. Congratulations. Which one do you you're think? You're Professor is Hulk now. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's it's a better. I have I have a much better life now. Do you? Mm-hmm. Good. I'm I'm scared of medication. Are you? Yeah. You should be, because a lot of people abuse it. I don't see. I don't know that. I, I'm really not worried about that part. I'm not worried about the abuse part, because. Oh, I'm not saying you would abuse it. No, I know. Well, I'm just saying this is why I'm I'm I am not a fan of it. Is. Not necessarily that I'm like, oh, I'm, I would get hooked or anything like that. But, like, I I have always really felt, and even, like, at a young age, and maybe never really knew how to, like, verbalize it, and I still barely do. Mm-hmm. But I always knew, I always felt like your body was saying something to you. Like, if you if something hurt, there was a reason for mm-hmm. it. And if you were just going to ignore it, then that's just as dangerous. Like, mm-hmm. it's still, that's it's still absolutely. there. Absolutely. Now, I also feel the same way when it comes to like my mental health mm-hmm. is the same thing. Now, if I'm just going to throw some pills at it to fix a chemical imbalance, well, what started that chemical imbalance? Like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm more of a, a, a very inquisical person on those yeah. kind of things. And that would make me nervous that it's like that thing is still there under the surface. Yeah. And kind of like, if you take me off my meds, yeah, it's not good. Well, right. It's still there. Correct. Do you, do you talk to anybody? Mm-hmm. Do you therapy? I used to. Uh, but they kept putting me into the same kind of rigmarole. It was the same treatment. Mm. Go through a CBT session. You go through the. Go through another CBT session. Go through another CBT t- session. What's CBT? Uh, it's. Um, Civil silence? Close. Uh, cognitive behavioral therapy. Well, it's not close. They should give you civil silence. <laughs> they, they're they really talking about it. No, they're, they're doing that with like, well, like with PTSD and stuff. That's what like I have. That too. That's what and I have. I, yeah. That's, sorry. I was kind of assuming that's what it was too. Yeah. That's what it is. That's what started it all. Is it is these nightmares that I was not having, I wasn't having control right. of of what my surroundings were. I lost control of, you know, just so many miles driven with you know the IEDs and and such. Like, right. I was having. I had a. I had. This was the only one I've ever had, where it was an actual flashback, like you see in the movies. Oh right. I w- actually hundred percent. I was driving on my way to Fresno and. I was back. Oh, you went straight. I scene. went straight right. No, no, no. I didn't have like some freak out. No, oh. it was like a. It was a flashback where my my entire sensory system was in Iraq. I was in one of the. Um, uh, I was I was driving a uh, MRAP, and I was back in there. Uh, I forget which highway it was, you know, but I was driving back there, and it, it, I I have no idea how long it was. Wow. All I know is that when I came to, I had to pull off on the side of the road, collect myself, because that was, that's dangerous. Oh, yeah. That's oh, not yeah. just like sitting at home watching a war movie. No. I'm driving. Yeah. No, yeah, you're out in public with other people around you. Yeah. And yourself in a moving vehicle. And I had a full-on flashback. You by yourself? Mm-hmm. I was by myself. Oh, that's scary. Yeah, dude, because, so I don't, I don't, I don't know what I looked like. If I didn't, I didn't know if I was coherent. I didn't know anything. Wow. So your eyes just went black. Yeah. Like the shining. Yeah. (laughs) They don't go black in the shining. 
Or one of them. No, not yeah. the shiny. One of those other one ones. One of them, they go black. So anyways, um, and the neighbor went back. So then um, they, once I was... Uh, so, but when you do oh, the, yeah. when you do the therapy and stuff, like was it through the VA too? Mm-hmm. And it's good stuff, honestly. It's good stuff. The I don't. But I'm. I like that you are. are you're getting help from them because yes. I, I hear a lot of bad stories. Correct. About and like I will always through, it, uh, at, through my experience. I am no way uh, suggesting that they are perfect. Hey, there ain't nobody that's perfect. Correct. Anyways. No, I'm in no way, shape, or form suggesting that they are even. Um, good i would right. say that they're fair and right. the reason they're fair is not because of the uh physicians or the support staff per se i would say it has to do with bureaucracy yeah because they're federally funded and so they have to do certain things certain ways and they can't do anything outside of that because there's 17 levels of bureaucracy in order to get something done less government well I, that's why i appreciate the fact that they're going to start opening up to private yeah so you can go see who you want to see right so, but anyways, as far as the, the medication is concerned, if, if I take it like I'm supposed to, I am a fully functioning adult. You can ask my wife. Nice. She, it, I'm a whole different person, nice. like a good way. Right. And you would never know. How, how long, do you mind me asking, how long you've been? Treated? Well, how long have you been medica- uh, taking medication? Taking medication since 2013. That's a good run. Yeah. And you'd never know. No side effects? Uh, there was one for a while. Some swelling? <laughs> no. You look a little uh, puffy. Thank you. Are we done? Are we done here? <laughs> yeah. In a minute. What's, remember, that, remember that SNL thing where she's like, yes, have you seen my, my, uh, my, my, sweaty, my, my sweaty balls? Sweaty balls. <laughs> like, oh, my sweaty balls. <laughs> They're so round. They're so round. Oh, they're so this plump. Alec Baldwin, uh, Alec Baldwin too. Dude, he was, yeah, yeah. He was uh, Mr. Sweaty. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, uh, <laughs> no, it actually one of the medications that I began on uh, caused a, a total lack of libido. Ugh. Like it was gone. Not good. Like turning you asexual. You could care less. Hmm. Couldn't care less. Could care less. I forget how that phrase goes. I understand. Do you know what I'm saying? It was I'm, gone. I'm picking up what you're putting down. It was not up. I can tell you that. I'm picking up what you can't get up. That's right. And that's what was happening. It, I didn't even want it. Because you're like, ew. Yeah. Well, it turns you gay. <laughs> did you go back to the... <laughs> did you go back to, to that vision? There and you were like... Am mm. I gay? Yeah, to have yeah. another talk with yourself. No. And then Picture after... It. And he's like, ugh. After after I got uh, on another, like an additional medication. So I take one, two, three, four. Four for the PTSD stuff. Four yeah. different ones. Uh-huh. And oh. what? Well, I mean, look, I'm glad that it's it's making a difference for you, but I feel like that's a lot. It is. You. I don't know. I mean, hey, if it's making it, if it's working. If it works... Yeah, there's no other adverse uh, side effects. The only uh, side effect that does happen, besides that one, was over time you have tolerance. Tolerance. Yeah. So. Oh, to the medication. To the medication. I so it like to your wife or something. No, no, no. So the majority. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want some? <laughs> I need it. So she, no, she needs it. She needs yeah. it. Yeah, that's fair. She needs. To get that's definitely tolerant. fair. Tolerate me. Yeah. Uh, no, you, you develop tolerance where a lot of the stuff I take is called SSRI, Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. And what it does is it, it there's different ways that your body produces serot- or communicates uh, serotonin. Mm-hmm. And one of them is the production of serotonin. The second one is the transmission of serotonin. And the other one is the reception of serotonin. So you can have a deficiency in any of those three areas. And so one of the areas is one of the medications uh, modifies the production, like increases the production of serotonin in the, in the uh, axon. And then the other one for the transmission of the serotonin, it's got, it, it, it uh, inhibits the, or it increases, no, excuse me, inhibits the enzyme that would typically break down the serotonin mm-hmm. so that it can be reabsorbed. 
right? So it takes the enzyme away, so the serotonin sits there longer. And then the last one, it takes the pumps, and it makes the, the res- receptors for the serotonin uh, more, more uh, readily available. So there's, th- th- there's different ways. And so, so what, what causes that, though? Like that, <coughs> that, that chemical imbalance or those, those things being blocked from Some of, some of it correctly. is Some of it is genetic. Okay, like, like flat out people are born that way. May have always had it like that. B- because it, it's a, like I said, there's three different ways that it could, there could be the, de- the deficiency. Right. And then there's traumatic events cause, uh, uh, traumatic events literally cause um, physiological changes, not just like memory issues. Sure. Oh it's yeah, a physiological absolutely. change into your, into the way your body produces certain chemicals. And, and, well stuff, and every, so. even every traumatic event. Any event can be, could be traumatic. It doesn't have to be on a mass scale. No type of thing. It could be traumatic to you. Uh, That's the hard part. Oh yeah, and especially like as a young kid, even more so. You know, where if it's something your parents could have said to you, you know, or somebody said to you, that could literally stick with you. Mm -hmm. You know, and how you, it it affects how you do things. I guess where I'm getting at with this is kind of the medication side of things, like. I don't know. I, I guess me, because me personally, I'm I'm like nervous with that kind of thing. You like should I, be. I w- I so I go to therapy, mm-hmm. and I like what I get out of that. Mm-hmm. I, I look at it. I approach it like exercise. Correct. You know, so I go regularly. Where I initially went because I, th- I had an issue. Mm-hmm. I had a problem. I had some. I had a same thing. A breaking a coffee table type issue. Situation. You know, yeah. I had an anger issue. And it was affecting me and my relationships and everything else. And trying to find answers. Well, even to a point where, like, I feel like I've, I haven't fully, obviously I haven't fully, you know, conquered that. But I've got past a certain point on it where I'm like, okay, I could totally live with this now because yeah. I understand it better. Correct. But I still continue to go. So I, the, I still the use, use of like medication a, in conjunction with what you just said. So, like... But see, I'll do I'll do psilocybin, some DMT or something like that. You know, it's a little more natural. It's it's w- well, it is. It depends on that. what your definition of natural is. DMT, like it's compounds made in your own fucking brain, comp- pretty fucking natural, bro. <laughs> so is serotonin. Yeah, but that's not what they're giving you. They're giving you serotonin. No, they're giving you little helpers for serotonin. <laughs> little helpers. That's what they're giving you. Yeah, they give you DMT, then you find the little helpers. That's how it works. All right, Joe Rogan. That's how I've been told. That's what you exactly. It's Sturgill Simpson, bro. I don't even know who that is. Oh my god, really? Turtles all the way down. Listen to that song. Okay, and you'll okay. like country music again. <laughs> okay, so he's a country music singer. So the whole thing about uh, PTSD and and taking medication. I was I was aware of the coping mechanisms I would need to employ in right. order to combat those scenarios. The issue was I wasn't physiologically capable of employing them because they would go so quickly. I'd right. go from zero to 100 too fast. Gotcha. So what the medication does now is I still experience those issues. It's just that it slows them down and it gives me more awareness. It gives you a chance. It gives me a chance to, to employ them. with it. Right? So there are certain situations where um, I know that if I don't go and remove myself from that scenario immediately, mm-hmm. five more minutes, 15 more minutes, I've lost it and I'm in a panic attack. Yeah. So it's, it's, it allows me the awareness. I so I don't take that. it to numb myself at all. You would never no. guess that. I don't know. It brings more, it, it allows me that chance to employ those things that you just talked about. Do you think that you would ever get off of it? Mm. If I felt that the medication became, uh, it, it developed, uh, it, was, it was adverse to my health. Right. If it started causing complications, then we would reevaluate it, honestly. And see w- if, we, if there was other alternatives and, and ways that I could go, you know, right. maybe less or different or something like that. Yeah. Right. But I just know at this point, the fact that it allows me to employ my coping skills, that's what's the benefit. Right. Because if I don't, it's awful. I understand that. So back to how I got to be a pastor. 
Yes, so you're a pastor. So, um, a how long pastor? have how long have we been doing this? What's the timestamp? About an hour. Holy shit! What do you want to do? Yeah, let's. Uh, okay, uh, all right. Well, here since we bounce around, there's probably going to be a little bit of <laughs> editing for uh, it, yeah. anyways. But um, first off, you said that this was going to give you heartburn. You were not kidding. Yeah, I know. Well, I also had that hot dog and. No, this I have heartburn now. Opinions. Why does it do that? Because it's super sour. You're right? sour. Super thorough. Super thorough, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about how about this? How about um, another time you can explain how you actually got to be a pastor and dupe people into letting you preach to them? Yeah. Um, how about for? This might even be a little long winded too, but whatever. How about for COVID? What are, what do you think about like the current situation with what you do with with the church in context of the church, context of the church, in context of your job, in context of, and we've talked about this like the current state of it, but even more importantly, what is the, what is it beyond this? Like, what does it look like post COVID or whatever we want to call it? Yeah, which I'll be honest, I hate saying that. It's so damn annoying, but it's it's here. Post nineteen, post nineteen. I'll take that. I'll I accept that. Post. It already is post nineteen. It's twenty. It's what do you? It's it's common now. Post Malone. Post nineteen. Is post nineteen a rapper too? I guess not. I thought I thought I was hip. Oh, I thought Post Malone was like a play on Carl Malone. Is it? Because he was the postman. <laughs> I like Post Malone, by the way. He's pretty badass. No, I I like his I like his demeanor. He I is like I like the Doritos commercial too. Post Lumon. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> all right. So, so okay, sidetrack. Okay, so church has COVID. How do you fix it? Go. Okay, well, I've got a lot of thoughts on COVID. Uh. <laughs> so when you talk about being long winded, um, I'll start with this. I will say that I 100 percent back the fact that there is something that we do not know about coronavirus or COVID-19 or SARS-CoV, you know, two dash whatever mm-hmm. that we have a very minimal understanding of its capacity and its ca- capabilities. And so what that's caused is the scare, right? We've we've had nations, we've had you know, entire continents go into lockdown out of this fear of the unknown because we had legitimate science at the time that suggested that it could very well be the next mass extinction. That that could have killed us all because it had the capacity to do that. Now, could, did it have the capability? There's a lot of things that have the capacity to do that. Correct. But this was flying out of air. This was going everywhere, and all of a sudden, Italy started croaking over. Don't we? I'm listening. Okay. So it had a capacity, right? And I think that, first off, it was it was released accidental because some low-level guy at Wuhan didn't follow protocol. I think it was like the guy from Jurassic Park that was trying to sneak yes. out the dinosaur yes. shit, and then he yes. falls in the mud, and then it's like, oh, there's the AIDS. Yes. Yep. And yep. Like, oh, there's COVID. Yep. Oops. Or like twelve monkeys. You remember that one? Okay, I've watched it. I don't remember. What? It was all about that. Was all about a disease getting released, like a virus, and uh-huh. it like wiped out the majority yep. of the population. Everybody lives underground and stuff. Bruce Willis got to go back in time. They can't cure the fucking disease, but they they somehow figure out time travel. In that movie, whatever. Yeah, yeah don't don't okay. look into it. Brad Pitt's really good in it too, by the way. But he's handsome, handsome. Uh, so, <laughs> so when it comes to, and I say all this because when it comes to my decision making, mm-hmm. the way that the way that my executive decision making is processed is through Your that executive? lens. Well, I just mean that in <laughs> in my more, you know. Sorry, I know you could have got to these points a lot sooner without me interrupting you, but that's true. But I don't <laughs> care. So through that lens, right, through that hermeneutic, if you will, it's it. 
What does that mean? It's just me. It, hermeneutic is honestly how you interpret scripture. It's how you interpret literature. It's how you yeah, interpret see, things. pulling out church words on yeah, me. Yeah, my bad. look dumb. My bad. So. <laughs> jesus it up on me. Yeah, my bad. Okay, <laughs> you can edit that, that out. Was a good, no, it was a good word. I'm so it's good. it's how I, it's it's the lens upon which I make my decisions. And looking through this idea of it has the capacity to do these, to do this thing. And that nobody knows what the real answer is. And you've got a bunch of people with the responsibility of taking care of the nation. And they're going to make a decision that some people are going to uh, cheer for and others are going to, you know, scream at. They're also idiots. Okay. They're also idiots. Imagine yourself being in their shoes. I'd be an idiot. I'm an idiot too. Right? Th- they're no different than me or exactly. you. Exactly. And I think that sometimes they get put on this pedestal as oh, if they're supposed to. put them on the pedestal all the time. They're idiots. That they're supposed to be perfect. And they're not. And they're going to make bonehead decisions. Mm-hmm. They're going to cause, they're going to cause, they're going to say stupid things yeah. and they're going to get in trouble. And I think that we they're need to be there to support. Trouble. That's fair. I wish they I would. think we need to be there to support them in, in ways that we can, but they also need no. to be held accounta- accountable for what they're doing. I will not support. So here's the deal. COVID came out and the very first thing was, okay, what do I do? It was Thursday whenever we got the California order to shut down. And normally I know we this. We did. We did it, it was actually a Saturday that ordinance went it down because I played a show Wednesday and then three days later, three or four days later, Newsom put the ordinance out. Okay, so three or four days later, right? Mm-hmm. That was a Thursday when Newsom uh, put it out. March 13th. Yeah, it was a soft closure March thir- on, like, on the Sunday, Saturday yeah. or Sunday. And, and then the actual ordinance came out on a Thursday because on on, on no on stinking it was a Wednesday because or when's, when was um, St Patrick's Day because that well that was pretty much the day we got shut down. Okay, well here's what happened that I only morning because my birthday was the next day and nobody gave a shit because everything was shut down and I was like it's cool. Oh, all Happy of a sudden, birthday to me. But mine is fine. supposed to be more important than worldwide, you know, death. So celebrate my fucking <laughs> birth rather than the death of, I mean, okay. So, people so died, Thursday, we normally had services. Okay. We had church services oh, on Thursday right. and we get this ordinance and I freak out. I'm like, right. uh, what do I do? So I called everybody. I know I called, um, people down South. I called Miller. I called people up North. I said, what in the world? And these aren't people that, that, are like friends. These are leaders in other churches, right? Big churches, small churches. And they all said, we don't shut know. it down. <laughs> they, yeah, it basically is what it was. The shut it ultra, down. Sh- ultra caution, uh, is you cannot go wrong by doing that in case this is real. So I said, okay, so I shut it all down. And then I def. I defended the whole thing, <laughs> you know, and I, I, I pushed and I pushed and I tried to share with everyone, you know, it, at first everybody was like, oh my gosh, with, you know, first two, three weeks, everybody was on board and like, yeah. oh my gosh, what's going on? But I after think everybody, everybody absolutely was everybody. Okay. So well, hold on. Uh, it's cool. Go ahead, Janie. You're welcome. So I go in and, uh, I keep sharing with everybody in the midst of chaos in the midst of what you would consider historical Christian persecution, what they do when they're not allowed to meet is they go underground. Ooh. It's, 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 it's biblical. It's historical. They would meet in the homes. Speakeasies. Correct. You, you, people That's don't know everybody this. did it. Pe- people don't know this, but the reason why we have the Jesus fish is because they weren't allowed to Christians, followers of what's called the way were not allowed to meet publicly having a faith in, in, um, in Christ would actually get them murdered. Uh, so what they would do is they had symbols and you'll see the various symbols, uh, throughout, uh, Christian history. Well, there's Cairo, which is, uh, uh, Christ, the first two letters. And you'll have, uh, Iota Ada and you'll have, uh, N O W the T. It'd be okay. So that'd be, that'd be a that's modern like equivalent. One. The not of this world. Yes. Right, not of this world. But that's like, that's like proclaiming your faith. This one was, Hey, if you see this symbol, that means that we're meeting. Oh, like when they put the Batman symbol yes. in Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, but this was like you write it on. They you know would my write my favorite it on Jesus fish is which one? The one with legs. This is Darwin in the middle. <laughs> 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 
back to my story. <laughs> People are dicks, <laughs> but I think it's funny. Sorry. So, so uh, the underground church existed for the first 300 years because pe- people's Christians' heads were being put on pikes. They were being burned. They were being drugged through streets. They were being murdered for who they were, right? So mm-hmm. it was like all about underground. And even if you know this about China right now, the ministry in China is some of the largest churches in the world are actually in China, but they're, actu- they're not allowed to meet publicly because of the style of government means you can't have any faith outside of that. Call me bastards. Correct. And so they, they actually have major restrictions on the Chinese church. And that you same thing in... And in also where the coronavirus started. Holy shit, you just put it together. Two and two. So then in the Middle East, they have the same issues, right? You can't meet publicly because of, of Sharia law and all these other issues that, you know, they just, the Muslims don't like Christians, at least in... Because of the Crusades. Probably. And yeah. so there's... They, they hold grudges. They hold a, a big grudge there. Sorry. Who yeah. won that one, by the way? Obviously, neither. Obviously, the Christians. Or the Jewish people. If it was if it was Christians, then the Muslims wouldn't be in existence today. Why that's that? the only way. That's a, that's the only reason why I said neither, even though they had a what would be considered a successful conquest by their spread about the invasions that they had, they didn't have a successful suppression of whoever their enemy was, because the enemy being the faith of the Muslim, they didn't su- they didn't it wasn't sequestered. It wasn't totally wiped Correct. out and Correct. totally dismantled Correct. religion. So that's why I don't think it was a success. That's what they Whether I wanted it do. to be one or I, th- I, I think I agree with their, their reasoning. I think that it was terrible. I think it was horrible. I think that was completely anti-Jesus in every way, shape, or form. That's one of the reasons why I couldn't stand the organized church is because they used faith as a reason to employ power, and I don't like that because there's nothing about the Jesus I read about that does that. Nothing in the New Testament that su- suggests that. So anyways. Anywho. Uh, so COVID hit. I told everybody, hey, we got to meet indoors. And that went okay for like the first week, two weeks. And then all of a sudden, everybody started grumbling. Everybody started grumbling. They were meeting grumbling. indoors? They were meeting. No, 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 no. Not inside the church. They were meeting in their homes. Oh. And so I was pushing this right. narrative about like, hey, guys, this is t- totally biblical. This is church, hi- uh, church, uh, church history. This is what goes on in uh, oppressed nations. This is the church that and would last. nobody cared. Not a single person. It went over like a fart in church. And I kept pushing and pushing and telling the biblical reasons and, and sharing that this is not just David Welch's opinion about it. This is what the scripture says about it. And this is how all Feels this. like opinion, David. You're welcome. And uh, so it didn't work out. And I was still trying and pushing and pushing and pushing. Anyhow, Did you call him stupid. No, I I'd considered myself like, what am I doing? What am I? What am I trying to push? Right? Yeah, but see, you're a good guy. I'd have called him all stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so, any who's, I actually, <laughs> I actually defended the the protests even, when in consideration of gathering. So oh. people said, why can they protest and we can't meet in church? And I gave him this example, and I share this still today. If you are in a protest, or excuse me, if you were in a, a movie theater and you and you fart. You're going to get caught. They're going to know it was you. Someone's going to smell it. It's going to be you. They might not know. But anyways, continue. You go to an outdoor concert, you can let them rip and no one's going to notice you. Oh, uh, makes sense. Okay, see the context here? And so I shared that with people. I said, you're, you're, it's just a different environment. You're not going to experience the same thing. And uh, they were like, oh, okay. Well, I kept defending that. And then Newsom or OSHA put out, you have to have a six foot stick out on with the farm laborers to, and somebody has to enforce the six foot rule. So stupid. Okay. So then I went, okay, wait a minute. Given the exact same environmental constraints, you're telling me that they are okay, but they're not. Uh, and this group, this group is hooting and hollering and throwing things and, and running around do, y- y- yeah. being uh, hellish. And this group's just but trying to earn a living. But that's how they're doing it. They're picking and choosing. Well, that's where, why. Where that's why I went. Going. I went out. Uh, we went, went and met at the park. And uh, once once we were meeting at the park, it was successful. Things, you know, people were able to meet and come together, and it was really done well. Uh, Try to take all the safety precautions we could, and continue to minister the best way we could during a pandemic. And then the writing on the wall was when we go through these 
that Newsom put together that economic stability or or safe, growth or whatever safe deal the the thing to reopen the thing to reopen and then it had the color coding yeah the Kay. tears tears so I knew th- with the writing on the wall is if you look at Tulare County specifically I didn't realize it was this widespread but the Tulare County specifically they it's filled with a whole lot of people that would rather give the middle finger to to Newsom than anything else right so if we were to uh, even get down to uh, a low enough degree to go into the red tier, we would re- we would relax so heavily with the masks and everything that right. it would inevitably just go higher, and we'd go have to go back into the purple well, tier. They Anyways, they just moved everybody, everybody back. Right, everybody moved back at least one, if not two. Correct, everybody, everybody. Did. So we we uh, stayed in the same place. That's the good news. I know we didn't have to make any changes, but I knew that. As a, I told the church, I said. It, we have to take a stance. Either this was way before what he did the other day. So we have to make a choice. Either we're going to stay outside and deal with the environmental consequences, or we're going to go inside and we're going to deal with the political con- consequences. Right. Your choice, right? And everybody, actually, no. I, I said, hey, it's all your choice. Let me know what you think. Not a s- cricket. Nobody said anything. No one said anything. No text. No call. No email. Nothing. So you just tell us. You. you we'll be there. <laughs> You, and we then trust they go you. inside and like so and Newsom's there and they're like, We told him not to. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he did this all on his own, sir. <laughs> we didn't want to. We we thought it was across the street at the park. Yeah. I don't oh, know. Oh, that's not okay. Oh no, no, here no, it's just my here apologies. To protest. Yeah. I brought my sign. <laughs> you should just bring a protest. Hand him out. So uh protest. we went inside. And now it's we I basically said you need to follow CDC to guide guidelines, masks on, socially distanced, but here's the deal. I'm not your mommy. I'm not going to go and enforce it. If you, you, We all have to be adults at some point, right. and yeah, it's up to you guys to self-police. Don't, this is not a freedom thing. Self-police, don't police your neighbor either. Yeah, this is self-policing. And if, if – but because I took that, state, that stance of laxity, I had – uh, air sanitation equipment installed into the air conditioners. Ooh. Did you know that? Fancy. Yeah, you told me that. Oh, okay. It's a multi-stage uh, For sanitation. For sake of this, we're like, oh, really? Yeah. So p- to help sanitize the air now. Basically, you you bought um, Tupperware and a vacuum cleaner from a uh, traveling salesman. Yes. And he put UV lights in your oh, that's all it filter is. system. That's all it is. There's, there's all, uh, all it is is UV. I was going to set a black light. In the bar and just be like, yep, see, look, it's going off. It's killing it right now. Try it. See what happens. Stupid. You're stupid. So you're staying open. So we're st- and, and that's that's the stance that we're taking. That's that's currently too. personally. I believe that it's a it's a big enough danger. To the pu- the public, not because of death. Right. Let's be clear. The reason why I think it's a big enough danger to the public is because I thoroughly believe that the those that do get infected are so incapacitated that especially in when you consider hospital capacity, mm-hmm. it's they're they're so um, medical intervention dependent that they ha- that they're if if we don't do something, the hospitals literally will be run over, and you have to uh, start making choices on who gets treatment. Yeah, and that's the fear of mine. No, and I know that that's that's been what they've been saying from the very beginning. Yes, you know, and I understand that. And the, and then so all a lot of these arguments about well, it doesn't kill you. Well, correct, it, it, you may survive. A right. lot of people do. A lot of people recover just right. fine, but those that don't are going to be so. You know, uh, they're going to have to be on such a life support system that you only have so much. Right. We only have so many rooms. Sure. And at some point, if it did, if if it could do those things, and it did do those things, like like they, they're, that they're worried about, then somebody's going to have to stand out in the front door and say, for the amount of of materials it's going to co- or cost to save you sing your single life, I can save five lives. So you're going to have to go over there. Sorry. Right. Then how how happy are people going to be? Well, that one person's not going to be happy. You know, and but there's going to be five people that are. And then there's going to be a ton of people. Well, one death isn't worth it, right? Well, every well that that's my biggest problem with it is where everybody gets on the things that are becoming cliche is the the stupid headline talking point one liners like that, right? Yep. Where like no one death does matter. Yes. But at the same time, my life matters too. Mm-hmm. 
and that has a lot of aspects to it, not just the fear of COVID. Mm -hmm. It actually has to do with my work, my family, my friends, the things that I do. And I'm going to live my life. Yes. And and I've always, and personally through this, I've never necessarily dis disagreed. I've actually made arguments for some of the things of why we're doing things, right? Like why we can't have the bar open, why we can't have people mm -hmm. inside. I understand that and why you can't have people in the church. I understand the logic behind it yeah. and the reasoning. I don't fucking agree with it, but that doesn't mean that I don't understand it. Yeah. Because ultimately where I fall down on all of this is it's a personal choice. And then also will come another talking point, cliche, one-liner that says, yeah, but when your choices start to affect my freedoms and my liberties, then there's a problem. I'm like, okay, now we're just getting lost. Yep. Now we're just going to continue down this you road. Go down uh, uh, this whole little cycle. Yes, of back and forth. And it's like, it has you know where nothing I nothing to do with you. you. You know where I go with this? I don't take you into consideration for choices for myself. I'm sorry. Okay. My, my biggest concern out of all of this is an economic um, collapse. All right. Mm -hmm. So due to the buy Bitcoin, if you can afford it, um, you can buy a hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin. You're going to get like a, an atom it's worth a percentage. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what was I even saying? Economic, Medication's not ec helping. Ec economic collapse. The economic collapse. Okay. About. So that's my biggest, that's, that's my number one. So, uh, with the deregulation that has happened over the last four years and has caused such a spike in our um, our stock market, mm -hmm. it the reason why is because we've reduced certain what some econo uh, economists would call safety features to keep us from having to experience things like the two thousand eight you know thing and, and it's not a safety feature, bro. It's fucking life. Okay, so they have these let's safety keep, features, right? Let's keep pumping money into the stock market and make it seem like that's protecting things. So it, Federal no, government's that's not what I was shit, saying, bro. That's what they're doing. That's it's fake as shit. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, get if to the let me. damn point. It's fake as shit. Just like the coronavirus. You know, that's what you want to say. No. So, uh, <laughs> but the stock market, the way that it is, it's, it's, there's false security right now. There's false security yeah. in our economy. Absolutely. And it's so false that, if there were to be a collapse right now, it would be harder than the 2008 because we don't have some of those safety features anymore to get to, to like what printing money. What's a safety feature? What is the safety feature that's in that built into the economy or even the stock market? There is no safety fucking feature. It's fucking based on lies anyways <sighs> and fluff, well, not real money. Well, the first, the, the one that we backed by nothing <laughs> backed by white men. It, the, yes. Stick it to them. Fucking whitey. I look at my kids and I'm like, because sometimes I can pass as some sort of non-white person, depending on how much sun I've had. Arab? Uh, Greek, Portuguese, but sure. No, so, uh, Way. <laughs> you ain't handsome <laughs> enough, son. <laughs> kidding. Uh, so, uh, but handsome. I look at my kids and I'm like, man, they are white and they are now the enemy of the state. Yeah. They are the enemy of the state. But okay, back to the economy. All right, so if if we were to we collapse, were talking about what what was going to be the future of the church after COVID, you told me to switch topics. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Oh, what was the future of the church after post COVID? Okay, future of the church post COVID. Yeah, it is Zoom. No, um, obviously not. If you want to know the real future, the twenty year future. Oh yeah. That's it's it's uncomfortable for us, but it's VR. Ooh. Oh man, you're a you're a tech nerd. That's why you would say that, dude. Okay, if you watch, if you watch some of the tech, what's the direction of Apple right now? Do you know what their major investment is? VR. VR. It's it's There's all a lot of them. They're like VR based right it's now. It's all VR the, is like the that's the, I the have the new phone. Future. I have the new phone, and they added a new feature called the lidar camera. Why? Because they wanted to have augmented reality, AR tech. 
is they use the lidar camera to be more uh, uh, submersive into the into the environment. Okay, that's the whole Isn't reason. The lidar, what they use to like see through like the jungle to like see like ruins and stuff like that. Is that the same kind of camera that they no, use? No, I like don't think it's. I don't think it's that kind of. That was capacity. the same kind of technology though. It uses lasers to yeah. show distance. Yeah. All right, I know what I'm talking about. Anyways, yeah. I'll look it up Anyhow. later. I'll show you. So if you look at Facebook. They're 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 putting all their money into the same thing into they all are. so everybody and it's freaky it's really freaky because it what it does is it separates the body from its senses it it changes the sensory input you get the neural link dude I'll I'll be first one you're done I know so uh anyways the VR tr- the VR experience is is what's coming that's what's coming and so you're gonna be at home. Slap some goggles on. You're Correct. gonna go. You're gonna to go to church. With David Welch. And there's gonna be cameras in the God. church that it were. It sounds uh, cool. It sounds. It, I'll be honest with you. It actually is pretty neat. It, that stuff is exciting. It is pretty cool. But what I always and this is when you know you're getting old is when mm-hmm. you're like, ah, it's gonna be what brings society down. Yeah. You know, this is gonna be detrimental on everybody. Yeah, that's what they said about electricity and the radio and yeah. the television and space travel. However, I do believe that we're headed to being just like fucking Wally. Exactly. Hundred percent. Hate that shit. Hundred percent. I like that movie. I know. Wally. I don't like that part. That you don't? Those are Eva. Yeah, stop. I don't like that part. <laughs> Because everybody <laughs> says that shit. I love it, kids. man. I He's love like, it. He's like, it's so cute. He's it like, is. it's not cute. It's sad. <laughs> it's terrible. We're all going to be fat and riding yep. around on scooters with scooters. shit shoving stuff in your mouth. Yes. And you know they shit in them. They don't talk about it, but you oh, know they shit in them. Oh, that's How true. How do they get rid of them? That's true. Do they just like dock do them up somewhere? We, do you think we would be shoot just... Shoot their poop out in the space? Colostomy and bags? And then it falls into another planet somewhere down the road that like some... Aliens live on. They get pissed off because we're dumping our shit on them. We don't even know we're doing it. And then they come back and then they kill like our great, 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 great grandkids. Like, think about the fucking mess we're making right now. So it's not global warming. It's our poop disposal. Oh, it's the little things you don't fucking (laughs) think about. Where are we going to put our poop? to fucking bite you. Don't fucking shoot out into space because it's eventually going to end up. What if we shot it towards the sun? I think we should do that with the garbage, too. I think it would be really expensive, but. What the fuck? Do you have rocket money? Someone does. Let's call, let's call, uh, what's his name? Elon Musk? Yeah, let's call him. Yeah, I got a new adventure for you. He doesn't have enough. Okay, so future of the church, it's VR church, but that's 20 years, especially for our area. Okay, then what's the, what's the future next year? The future next year is going to be an amalgamation of, of. Of online church, in person church, and this this um So we're we're here forever. It's it's gonna be at least five four more years. Four more years of this. Guarantee it. All right. I guarantee that we will not return Mark to Mark the tape to to s- to return to a a quasi normality that was pre COVID for five years. Here I was thinking I was bringing a pastor on here to get some Uplifting message. No. You son of a bitch. You know, and, and if you if you want to take it from that, that's all that's all the, if the Lord wills. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> so so that's the future of the church from my perspective is 2021 is going to be how how do you develop community community engagement social experience digitally yeah it seems strange it's it's impossible just seems so we're strange. clear yeah it's it's absolutely impossible to to replace physical co- connection like that you just can't do it and that's why we don't have vr right now because oh. they can't do it you can't have mass adoption because it just won't work right it's now. It's going to be like a um, demolition man. Yes. They go have sex. They got their the helmets, s- special helmets, and did you know that that reference was in uh, Coneheads as well? 
with the sensory bands, oh, the yeah. little halos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeff Farley. And <laughs> <laughs> what did I say? Chris Farley. Chris Farley. Dude, you're way off. Way off. Swimmy. Swimmy. I reference a lot of movies in this. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. So that's that's you know, uh, being coronavirus is kind of like the the main. That's the defining characteristic of 2020 and 2021, and I'm. We ain't even there yet. It's going to be a 2022. It's all going to be, it's all going to be economic recovery for the next four years. We have surpassed our GDP for the first time in the last. Yeah, I'll be honest. I I don't know that we're even, we're even done, fucking it up yet. No, guarantee it. And that's the problem is that people don't want to talk about that. They want to talk about, you know, Trump and and you know, the Senate race and they want to talk about election and they want to talk right. about the validity of, of COVID or, or, or even, you know, my, ma- my body, my mask or whatever. They want to talk about those things, which are so trivial. Everything's trivial. I would rather secure my family's future than worry about a mask. Right. I would rather, I would rather understand how are, how are we going to have a collective community in, in a in a completely alternate universe that we're in right now. Right. How are we going to do that? I don't want to I don't want to have my life inundated with what Trump tweeted today. And that is all I hear. I want just a little bit of it. Like not the whole day, but I do want like you want a I'll be honest, that's the only reason why I'm on there. It's a, <laughs> on Twitter is I follow him. That is one hundred percent why why Jack Dorsey hasn't kicked him off. I'm on there because it it'll impact the bottom line for. Donald Trump and Brett Thompson, because Brett Thompson constantly calls him a dumpster fire. Yeah, and I'm the only one that reads that he calls him a dumpster fire, and I'm there for to I support. Need to, I need to follow you there and to support my boy Brett. I need to follow. I need to support Brett as well. You should. He's a writer, and he calls President Trump a dumpster fire. It's his best writing. Huh. Not I really. Th- He's a very good writer, but. I I have to and be I careful. That he does that. I love that I'm the only one that sees him talk trash and Trump don't give a shit because there's like yeah. fifty thousand other people replying to him and saying the same nonsense or you know stroking him off one way or the other. I don't care. I just want to see it. It's like because that's you. Yeah. You want you want to watch the world burn? No, I don't want to watch it burn. <coughs> you just said that. I just no. I just want to watch Trump say some shit and Brett call him a dumpster fire. He's like, you piece of shit. And I'm like, I can hear it in his voice <laughs> when I read it. And I can't, I have to be careful about what I say because what I say has to be. So uh, at this point in my life, I choose to say nothing because on Twitter, uh, on, on most social media, you'll find if you go onto my you social know media, I'm gonna, like put this on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. It, w- w- I'm being very calculated on what I say. <laughs> so, and, and I have to. Because what it will do is it can it can paint the wrong picture of what the gospel is, because in, it, without people understanding it, I am a representation of the gospel. Yeah. So if if I'm taking if I'm introducing political like personal political opinions into the gospel, then I am now I am adulterating that, mm. and I can't do that. I have to make sure people know that that life isn't about paying attention to the daytime drama or what are those the soap operas of yeah. politics right I, I'm, I'm not supposed to be portraying that well i think that people because people don't have a way to like actually gauge how involved they are into something like that you know or how much it actually consumes them where like if you could just dabble a little bit mm-hmm and but not let it consume you or let it be the talking point for everything that you do like I, i'm a fucking smart ass mm-hmm. but i know I, I pay attention to a lot of what's going on but i also don't follow just headlines i try to research the facts and, and find out that's the things, you're you know? you're part of the you're part of the minority right which you know and because i find myself arguing with friends on say both sides of it right yeah. like my liberal friends and my my conservative friends where i'm very much in the middle because because one, I don't give a shit, really. I just know what I feel is right and what is wrong. And then there's the divisive things that I think it's like that's it's dumb that it's even divisive. It's because we allow it to be. You know what I would rather talk about? Uh. I'd rather talk about, you know, the the uh, 
effects and consequences of the local uh, sales tax increase. You know uh, what I would no rather? Oh shit! I, you know what I'd rather be have my water cooler surrounded by is like what what are we doing as a city uh, to future proof our economy? No shit. I, I, those are the conversations I want to talk about. They I don't, don't want to. Nobody gives a shit, especially like Facebook, like the Exeter. You know, you're from Exeter Facebook deal. It's always about either some lost fucking dog or cat, or <laughs> just gonna somebody say heard <laughs> fucking gunshots over yep. on on F Street, and it's like it was a fucking firework. Shut yep. up. But then it's like, what are we know, doing? Why, why is the road all tore up for like three weeks? Yeah. And, you know, well, why don't you pay attention? Fucking right? assholes. So those are things that, be, and here's the reason why: nothing about the success or failure of the of the voting system that's causing the difficulty between Biden and Trump right now has direct effect on what I'm going to eat tomorrow. Could. Since when? What if it becomes government cheese? Because he's a communist. Well, bastard. first off, it's government cheese. Government, and I lived on that when I was younger. It's delicious. Well, it's I actually not liked real the cheese. I liked the compressed ham. <laughs> I did. It's spam, bro. I don't even think this this was like rejected spam. Yeah, but at least it didn't taste like spam. No, it didn't. Spam is so gross. I don't like spam at all, at Ooh. all. Not even one bit. If that was if that's what they offered on Wick, I'd I'd find ways to be off of it. I'm not on it, but I'm just saying. No, you can't get spam. It's Wick. No, I can get good Oscar Mayer lunch meat. Oh, that's funny. I used to work at R and N. So did you really? Yeah, you know that. I always thought Wick was cool. I always thought it was a cool deal because it was like was specific for the things that they could get. Thank you. It was specific to like for the, the milk, the eggs, the cereal. I remember all the people would bring up cereal and shit, and they'd be like, "It's Frosted Flakes. Can I just get it?" I'm like, "Name it on the list." You got to get kicks. Kick socks. I'm like, kicks is good. Kicks is really good. I like Okay, out of all three of these, I prefer this lemon. The lemon. Is this a lemon? Yeah, the last one was a lemon. The first one you guys had was blue raspberry, then watermelon. So the blue one, blue raspberry. Red one, watermelon. This beer color is lemon. Yeah, I think this one's, this one's pretty good. I kind of like the blue. The... The lemon is a basic sour, I feel like. It just oh, has cool. that, that bland, sour, Thank super you. heavy. You just called me basic. Yeah. <laughs> You're basic. <laughs> the fact that you know what that is is yeah. makes you hip. You're a hip pastor. I'm a hip pastor. Thank you. Super Thank hip. you. Um, Lots of dick jokes, too. Listen, You're super listen. Hip. Well, that's one of my difficulties, honestly, is because of my military background, because of the way that I grew up. Once you experience a certain thing... It's in your it's in your existence, right? Oh yeah. You can't miss what you've never had. Mm-mm. So once you've once you've experienced life where crude humor, or um, like dark humor, or or yeah. certain certain um, certain uh, uh, jargon, yeah, you know, matters in your life in order to communicate, like l- realistically for life and death, right? Yeah. Like in order to build these relationships, oh yeah, absolutely. It's difficult to then just immediately turn that off immediately turn that so that still exists within me uh the cursing is, Which is also why you're you're able to take some of the jokes that i'm giving you right now too yeah. and is also why i can't turn that shit off is for those exact same reasons <laughs> yeah it's and it's hard because then it's like well are you living pure you know scripture says don't be slanderous don't don't let any uh Did I ever you know, have d- a problem with authority you don't have to tell me okay you don't have to tell me one bit. You can tell the <laughs> scripture to quit telling me what to do. <laughs> you know, uh, you know how you'd know there's a flight medic in the room. Uh. They'll tell you. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, that's the same with you. You, you don't have to. T- uh, you don't have to tell me that you do, you don't like authority. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't have to tell me one bit. So anyways, that's that's kind of where we stand. Um, you know, myself, my with co- coronavirus, uh, the. The way of the church, at least my, the way that I feel the church is headed in the next few years in order to compensate for some of these things. Right. The biggest difficulty is not what I believe. It's sharing that effectively with others to the point where it changes their belief. Yeah. That's the difficulty. Because nobody wants to be told what to do. Everybody's got their own opinion. Everybody feels like, you know, unfortunately whatever their preferred news station is, is the only source of truth. Right. And it's, and it's, it hampers this idea of critical thinking 
it hampers the idea of trying to have effective arguments or to even see that the most important thing right now is not to be arguing about which candidate is the best candidate. Right. The most important thing is to figure out how are you going to live while everyone else is arguing about it. Well, it's it's like a even even take it down to something that's super simple. Instead of let's talk about ideas instead of talking about other people. I mean, in, in that regard, so like when it comes to like Trump, Biden, those kind of things, like I mean, that's like directly we're arguing All of this about is a candidate instead of like what about like an actual let, let's talk about a solution. Let's talk about an idea. Let's come yeah. up with something. That, and that's way funner to discuss. No, because then if you if you're talking about a conservative idea, you just become a liberal. If you're a liberal that's talking more sense conservatively, now all of a sudden you're you're a yeah. right wingist. You you can't exist in a middle. And they all know that. Everyone knows that. And it's very difficult for right now. Right. Very difficult. But to be realistic, right now what we're seeing in the socio-political atmosphere is the equivalent to the Jerry Springer show. Mm. Absolute equivalent. Because we're all stuck. We can't turn away. So a country about nothing. <laughs> yes. We are watching we are watching this and we can't turn away. Yeah. And we keep tuning in and the ratings keep coming and so they keep feeding the same thing that's getting us to watch. And see and that's why I think that like a lot of it's not that that's not even over, you know, as far as like the the media push on things. No. I mean, no. Look at how nonchalantly it's like, well, Biden's the winner, you know, and it's like I don't even, I, I don't really care about the nonsense that's going on <laughs> with Trump and his lawsuits. All I know is that I'm like, you know what? I, I wasn't really a big fan of a Biden winning. I didn't necessarily want care for Trump to win either, but out of the two, it was kind of like, man, let's just keep going with the eight year term thing, I mm -hmm. guess. But, like, now I'm like, okay, I really hope they don't turn it back around because I feel like that's way worse if it's they come out worse. and they're like, oh, well, looks like uh, Trump did win. It's like, oh, fuck. Now he's right. Yeah. Well, and, and, well, and here's <laughs> another thing about that, though, too. Because, uh, and this is one of the big talking points about it, but say they go and do a hand recount of everything, mm -hmm. right? And it still comes out and shows Biden wins. I, I would almost, you know, Guarantee to say that, yes, that's probably what would happen. Mm -hmm. But if there is any ounce or any evidence of it ever of something being off, mm -hmm. there is something fucking wrong and with the electoral system. Okay. You want to trip out on this? So I forget which county it was, but it was in a Pennsylvania county, and they, they threw out a f ninth of, of all the votes – for the county, um, a sixth, excuse me, a sixth okay. of all the, the votes for the county, which, uh, or, or, or for the state, which accounted for an extremely large chunk uh, because of what they called uh, discrepancies. And so that's a headline. That's a headline. Uh, hundreds of thousands of votes thrown out because of discrepancies, right? But if you read the article, what you find is it had nothing to do with the political, the, the, um, the uh, presidential ticket or the s Senate ticket or congressional ticket, none of that. It had everything to do with a local one oh. that came that was too close. And according to their, oh. their bylaw or whatever it was, they had to throw it out because it was too close. And there was no way for them to separate that local election from the ticket to do a re-election on that one piece. Gotcha. So they had to throw out the whole thing. There was no problem with the presidential right. part, no problem with the Senate or the congressional election. Had everything to do with like a local right. uh, mayoral so yeah, like thing. A, like a, yeah, so it's like an isolated, specific. But you don't deal. see that in but the you article. Read, yeah, you read the f you read the damn, uh, you know, the first paragraph or even the damn headline, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, look at it. You know that there's something, something off. Or there was something afoot, yeah. right? But it had nothing to do with the major presidential ticket. You know, I mean, just the fact that it it. it it's taking as long as it is. This day and age seems kind of ridiculous. Like you're talking about going VR for <laughs> church, and I'm like, how the hell are we not voting online? And that drives my conservative, hard, you know, not even hard right, but my right leaning friends crazy when I bring that up. Okay, so the dude, you know, the dude got fired today. That's in charge of that. John Bolton. No. Oh. Uh. Uh. uh what's the guy's name? Plays the saxophone. Oh, Kenny G. 
No. Bill Clinton. Matt Rafferty. He played that. In Did he really? Yeah, in eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Uh. Anyways, Sacks moving on. on. The phone. Uh, maybe it's a clarinet. Kenny G. That is Kenny G, huh? Oh, Bolton. fucking Bar. No, Bolton. Bar plays the fucking bagpipes. Does he really? Yeah. All right. So this dude, yeah. there was this uh, organization. I was just talking about it today. Um, it's it's the whole purpose is cybersecurity and and internal threats management or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it was appointed. Uh, President Trump appointed this in 2016 or 2018, excuse me. And he hand selected this dude, and the dude was exactly what you would expect from a loyalist. He d- totally lifted Trump, always praised Trump, always you know on Trump's side. And when correct, and when Trump was uh, making his claims about how every everything is against him, the whole thing is rigged. All of our election system is broken. Every, you know, this system turned, f- you know, hundreds of thousands of votes over to Biden. And he said, um, he said, sorry, there's 59 other of us that sh- there's no, there's no credible evidence for that. Mm. And so Trump, hours later, he found out about that tweet and he fired him on Twitter. Didn't even go through the proper channels. Good. Straight up fired Good. him on Twitter. That's what you get. Don't smart off to your boss on Twitter. <laughs> he didn't say it sp- directly to, to do that shit. I'll fire their ass too, right there on Facebook. I don't care. That's true. That's how That's I fair. roll. It didn't seem oh, though. It didn't seem mouth. submissive. Huh? It submissive. What word am I thinking of? Divisive. No. Suggestive. No. When you when you're being insubordinate, it didn't it didn't suggest being insubordinate. Mm. It didn't. It just basically said. Shut up, dummy. Didn't have any direct t- to Trump. Yeah. Had no mention he of took him. It personal. Took it personal. Maybe they had a personal him. conversation, and then little shithead went and did some little passive aggressive bullshit and puts That's it true. on. That's true. Twitter and That's Trump's true. like, "Fuck your scabby ass, get out of here." Yeah. I just expect more. I what guess. You say like Paul said, "Chop your dick off and eat it, bitch." That's what he basically. Let it be so. So, as we began our conversation, we shall end it scripturally. (laughs) And that's what you choose. That's what I choose. You know which one always hangs me up? Uh, One of the... Jesus (laughs) what? Yeah, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. That's that's five hours worth of conversation right there. Nice try. So... It's two words. (laughs) Okay. One Uh, scripture I know by heart. That's the one? (laughs) That's what you pick? I try to remember all the begats. No, you do not. I thought it would have been cool to just go through the list of the begats. Show me. Huh? S- spit them out. No, I said it. W- I, that was the one I wanted to. Oh, okay. And then I got to reading it. I was like, there's no No, way. there's too much. There's too many of that. Uh, no, it's I there was. Flip a few pages, and I was just like, I don't know. Genesis. So there was this group of people called the Levites, right? And they had a very special position. In the Old Testament, they had very specific duties, and they were um, they were highly regarded for what they did and in, involved with worship. And this dude was traveling; he was a Levite, and he was traveling, and he went to this one town that he knew was one of the tribes of Israel. So he we expected to be, you know, amongst brethren, and they wouldn't give him a place to stay. So he took his prostitute. He brought her with him. Yes, he this is this is in him? the Old Testament. Brings his 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 side chick. Ooh. He gets mad because somebody won't give him a place to stay, so he chops her up into twelve pieces and mails parts of her to the twelve tribes, and All says, right. "Look what this this area did to me. They wouldn't they wouldn't uh, let me sleep." Wait, why did we talk about that? Because we were talking about Paul and oh, chopping dicks up. Yeah, I thought I was talking about like who begat who. No, no, no. This is this all has to do with the extremities. Oh, that was yeah, yeah. This is that wasn't very that wasn't direct scripture either. I don't know where that one came from. <laughs> <laughs> that's not like a that's scripture it's like a movie. That's if you read the Old Testament, it is more intense than Game of Thrones. He's a Levite. Yeah, he's a Levite. He was a very, very, very. Uh, you know, there's not much said about him as an individual, but his tribe is very highly respected. Sounds like it. 
And what he did they is demand respect. That's why he chopped up his side chick. Chop a hoe up. And <laughs> mailed her. Like, honestly, like who thinks of that? A Levite. Badass. <laughs> Get a point across. Yeah, you know, he did. He did. He could have tried to just like a finger or something of the person that denied him. Yeah. You're probably two birds with one stone. She's probably acting up. Think she was mouthing off? Hell yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> So Get a point across. All right. So we talked about me getting to the position of being a pastor. We didn't finish that part out. However, we did move on to coronavirus and its effects of the church and its effects of, you know, um, how those those effects of the economic and the sociological effects um, yeah. integrate with the church issues. And I think that at the end of the day, for me, it's all all encompassed in what can I do best to spread hope, love, and compassion in the midst of all this. I like that. That's the only that's the thing that racks my brain daily. How can I spread how can I spread uh spread spread, spread uh yeah <laughs> spread hope, love and compassion when everybody wants to spread fear, hate and pain. And I think in just in general, wanting to spread hope, love, and compassion, regardless of the situation, is still it's a difficult very thing. Very honorable, and should be that should be what everybody. It would be nice if everybody kind of aimed. Well, if you've been coming to church, you'd know that that's what I've been talking about for the last few months. It's getting in the way of my is that what your spreading sports? hope <laughs> and love and compassion. <laughs> I've basically been talking about how we ha- we all have our personal agendas, but that's not what we're supposed to be about. Hey, it's not my personal agenda. A spread in pain, hope, or spread in, what did I say? Love, hope. No, the other one, the opposite. Oh, pain and suffering. Suffering and body parts. Yeah, being buttholes. Dickheads. I don't know if I could say that on stage. You could. I'll you say buttholes. Just, uh, butthole. I'll say jerks, butthole buttholes. You seem so timid, man. That's the deal. Maybe yours is. Yeah, just kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> it's Seems it's a little shy. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't be a butthole, people. Yeah. No way everybody's going to go, oh, I need to take it serious. No, that's but true. Look, there's a lot of dickheads out there. We don't want to be them. You know, the, and to some degree, that's what, that's what that shock value of that language really does cause my message to sit harder. Yeah. And so that's the delicate balance. Right. Is knowing that scripture specifically says, don't let any foul talk come out of your mouth. Don't be using any slander. Don't be using anything that's not helpful. Uh, but at the same time, when you think about our language, the linguistics of it, even though we do view those things as as uh, uh, pejoratives or, or, or even um, expletives, if you will, right. they, they have a real communica- communicative effect. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying. If I were to say, if I were to say, the fuck you mean, you understand what that means. Yes, and it could mean a couple things, depending on the tone and the cadence. Right. And it, 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 but that it's an effective piece of communication, and I did not use that in a way that was was uh, derogatory Slanders. to you, um, but it was able to express certain attitude. It was, you know, opinion, all in that. Yeah. And some people need that because they don't they don't they don't know how to speak like I'm speaking. The way I'm speaking right now is not how I would normally speak on stage. Right. No, for sure. Because I the way I'm speaking right now is is definitely and co- uh, conceptually higher than wha- how I would deliver certain things. Sure. And there's a reason because n- yeah. when we're in situations like that, we didn't come to church to 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 hear from a professor. Right. We didn't do that. Right. We're not there to, l- to learn about, you know, atomic structures. We came there to learn from, from how, how to live our lives better, with more purpose, with more reason. Hope. Hope. Love. Compassion. Compassion. All of that. And we need, to have, we need to have a way to hear that and understand that in ways that we can. Yeah. And so if I have to h- say shits or dams in order to get that across, I will. 
I sure as shit will. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I, was, I took it serious. You did. <laughs> you did. All right. All right that's buddy. my story. Well, I appreciate it. I can. That's all I do well is talk, so you can have me on any time. You know I will. I like it, especially uh, for this little goer thing, so I do appreciate you coming. Absolutely. We'll do it again. All right. We'll actually get through how you became a pastor. That, that'll that be what this is. It'll be a series of, like, we'll get to how you actually got there. Yeah. Like, the actual literal steps. Yeah. Teeny dive into it today and jumped all over the place, like I, like we said we would. Yep. Which works. I like that. That's good shit. The beers that were tried today. <laughs> get them in the shot. Yeah, well those are the beers we tried today. <laughs> yep. I like that. And also uh, Rocky Hill Community Church in Exeter. Mm-hmm. Services on Sundays. Sunday, and it's uh, currently 9 and 11. You can check us out at RockyHillExeter.com or go to our Facebook page at Facebook.com backslash RockyHillCC. You actually search for stuff on Facebook like that? Mm-hmm. Well, that's our actual name. Like, you can type that in the yeah. URL. So, the, the CC for Facebook? And, uh, it's it's uh, uh, Rocky Hill CC. That's a lot. That's our tag. Uh, when like I the do custom URL. unemployment, I just put Facebook.com for my, uh, like, job. Oh, really? Like, application yeah. things, I just put Facebook.com, not CC. So, now oh, I no, know no, no. that. No, I, uh, what I do is Facebook.com backslash Rocky Hill CC. So that's like our oh, actual Rocky URL. Hill Community Church. Yeah. That's it's not a dot. It's the actual URL. I thought you like forward slash CC. Like oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, fancy no, 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 no. I don't do all that. No. Hidden URLs. No. No. But that's my mission, man. That's that's what I'm here about. Tell them about the dark web. <laughs> Later. Okay. <laughs> Good night. That's a different one. <laughs> Good night, Landon. Love you, buddy. Love you, too.